there's more Purple Hill. It's very orchestral, that track. Hey, Nat? That was good. I like, uh, for a second, I knew we were playing Purple Hill for the whole show, but it didn't really match the other songs that it sounded we sort of like today. That sort of reminded me of... Uh, of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of what? <laughs> Godspeed, you Black Emperor. That's what it reminded me of. Well, they don't have a vocalist. They don't have a vocalist, apparently. Okay, we're here with Jude Fernandez, uh, author, one of the authors in Indian Voices. And Jude, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank now, you. so, um, how, now we were talking a little bit before you came on, and you, you mentioned that you have a background as a copywriter working as an, in the advertising industry. Yes. Um, but how long have you been doing this kind of writing? I, I guess it's a short story that you've got in, in this volume. I've always been writing, even when I was an advertising copywriter. Uh, we just had very staccato sentences in advertising copy because it was run down by the client. But um, I used to write short stories on the side, so I just got, um, I had compiled short st a short story collection about uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I came to Canada, I decided that I would start writing again. Okay, so uh, so you were in the copywriting industry in I I India, in India I yes. presume? I was at McCann Erickson, uh, and then uh, before heading to a, to Canada. Okay, yeah. so and then so when did you come to Canada? Uh, in two thousand and two. All right, and yes. uh, so why did you come to Canada? I lived in London, actually. My brother and sisters live in England. And uh, I lived there for a while and decided that I would like to head li or live in the West because um, Canada was, uh, was uh, encouraging new immigrants at some point of time. They still do. Mm -hmm. um, newcomers to Canada are always welcome from, th from throughout the world. So uh, that was one of the reasons to come to Canada. It, 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 is a, it was or it is a growing economy and uh, there's so much to do out here. Do you really so think so? I, I do. I do. I'm positive. Are you? Yes. Okay, well, it's good to be positive, but then there's reality check. I'm just curious because, I mean, you were doing great in India by the sound of it. Sure. I mean, I would think that yes. that was a, a great job, mm -hmm. working for a great company. Pro mm -hmm. And we know India is a really rising economy, right? That's true. Yeah. Well, well, sometimes I get the impression that Canada is a little bit um, stagnant mm -hmm. economically, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious about your experience. I know you're hopeful, which is great, but what's the reality in terms of the opportunities that you personally have um, been witness to since coming to Canada, compared mm -hmm. to what your opportunities were in India? Um, there was a brain drain in India. Uh, people started heading towards the West, but now it looks like people are heading back to India. Mm -hmm. um, I have friends in the Middle East, I have friends in England, who are actually going back uh, for opportunities in India. So they haven't burned the bridges, they haven't closed the doors. Mm -hmm. uh, India is actually inviting people from different countries now to come back. Um, ever since there's been this boom of in economy, as you've called it, mm -hmm. um, the boom in economy has happened because India has its own industries, it has its own infrastructure. It doesn't solely depend on the U.S. or any other country. It's got, it's, it's stabilized itself in its economy because it has a lot of industries who are multinational, so to speak. Uh, for instance, uh, I'll give you an example like Tata. Tata is a company in India which has an office in Toronto. Tata Motors? Uh, yes, that, that is correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the sm little small car that they have designed, which, is, uh, which, is, will, which will soon be launched in India, yeah. Okay, yeah. do they have the water-powered car? Um, you have to ask them that. Uh, <laughs> that's the future. Someone has it. Yeah. I know, someone does yeah. have it. There actually, there was a conspiracy theory that... The, I that know that they're trying to have an electric car, so, so yeah. uh, to answer your question, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I heard that the Japanese had a water-powered car, and that's why this is just a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. not saying this is true, but that the Americans, through their HARP facility, created the earthquake on Japan because Japan was about to launch the water-powered car, which, of course, would wreak havoc with the oil industry, mm -hmm. right? If you could fill up your car from your tap. <laughs> I think it was a uh, tsunami-powered car. Tsunami-powered car, I saw the video. Okay. 
Okay. Do you buy into that conspiracy stuff? No, I don't. Jude? I don't. Okay. <laughs> it's probably a... Uh, so here we are. Yeah, you're an author. So uh, what's your story about in the India Voices? Um, my story is about, um, about a Goan family. If you look at different authors throughout the world, they talk, Indian authors that is, they talk about, um, like Jumpa Lehri talks about the Bengali community, which is a sub-community in, in, in India. Uh, Rohintan Misri talks about the Parsi community. Mm -hmm. um, there's someone like Salman Rushdie who talks about uh, the uh, Muslim community. So I belong to the Goan community in India. I grew up, I mean, I, I was born in Kenya, but my parents moved to India when, uh, Ke when Kenya was Africanized. And uh, so we lived in Goa. Were, th uh, were they originally Goan? They were originally Goans parents? themselves, yes, of course, yeah. So, so I hear they have nice beaches there. Did it's you hang out on the yeah, beach? Yeah, I should be a walking, talking advertisement for Goa. Really? It's a beautiful place to be, yes. Yeah, it's, it's like the West Coast, right? Uh, it's like the LA of India. Somewhat. Um, with the food, with better food. And better uh, food. Better food, yes. What, what is it that makes the food so good? Is it the Portuguese um, influence, do you think? Yes, there is a fusion cuisine. Uh, so the Portuguese uh, brought the cuisine. So, for instance, you get something called bibinka. Which is, uh, which is like a caramel custard or a caram caramel pudding, which is purely Portuguese or okay, Spanish. Okay, I'm starting, my mouth is and starting to uh, water. Yeah, they brought it to India and, and then um, all, that, all that happened in Goa was that they used uh, what's known as cardamom or elaichi in, in Hindi and they added that to the pudding and made it so much more, uh, you Flavorful. know, to get clear. Exactly, that's right. Okay, yeah. that's good. So what, what's a like a typical Goan dish, or what's a really well-known? The most well-known Goan dish is called Sarpatel. What can you write it down? <laughs> it's, 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 I'll spell it. It's okay. S-O-R-P-A-T-E-L. Now this is going to get a lot of viral hits. So that's Sarpatel. Sarpatel. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Sarpatel is made of pork belly. Okay. It's cut into fine pieces, and then it's fried, and then the spices are added, and it's almost uh, and vinegar, and it, it lasts for almost a month if you keep it uh, in, the in the fridge yeah yeah it's it's pickled pork oh. yeah, and it's very tasty could you make some vegetables with that um, or it doesn't match it uh, depends okay <laughs> <laughs> but you don't need vegetables <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so now what's your story called it's called wishbone wishbone yeah and what's it, what's What's it about? It's about, uh, a, um, i just taken two characters in the story. So it's a husband and wife character. And um, it's about how their marriage actually crumbles. So it's the little things that come into the, f into, into the picture. And then it affects the their, their emotional or quotient in the, in the book or in the characterization. And then the wife just thinks that uh, she wants to get rid of her husband. So... Okay, so that's it. And where does it take place, the story? It takes place in Goa. In Goa. In Goa. So, we, you know, we often hear about, and we all know about, sort of the institution of marriage mm -hmm. kind of falling apart here in North America yes. or the West. Mm -hmm. Are there similar pressures on, on marriage in India? Yes, especially at this point of time. There are similar pressures yeah. in India. But the, the joke is that if you get married in India, you get married to the family of your spouse as well. Right. So there's no way that you can actually alienate yourself from a marriage because uh, everyone is integrating themselves and poking their noses into your business. So they kind of, uh, you know, marriages uh, have an influence of, of the joint family or of families or of the mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law. They always some annoyance at the, at the end of the day. Annoyance? Uh, I would say annoyance because yeah. uh, considering a nuclear family out here and um, you know you don't want your mother-in-law, father-in-law to be to be actually interfering in your life, right? Well you don't so want it there either by the sound of it. Yeah, right? but, but there's no way you can get out of that, of that situation. Are there, are there more marriages breaking up in India? Um, I would say so at this present time. In fact not many people even uh, even want to get married. Mm -hmm. Um, in India, the the living together, the you know the everything is 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 out in the open. Um, there are that used to never happen in in the 90s or 
it started started happening in the early 2000 uh, and uh, uh, according to the politicians it's western influence but i don't think so yeah what do you think what do you think is the real root cause the the root cause would be that um marriage is is something that is slowly um, breaking throughout the world so uh, there there would be an influence in india in any case mm -hmm. um you know what what do you think is is causing it what do i think is causing it um well i'm no psychiatrist or psychologist so uh, but, I, uh, true, but you I would I would just have to say that uh, people are willing less and less to take. Uh, m everyone in the world today, I would say, is or in India. Let's take India, right? We are talking about India. Is inward looking. You look only for yourself. You you are not looking for a commitment, a committed relationship. Um, you're looking to to only further yourself in in whatever situation you are. So I think that that you know essentially is is the breakup of of marriage. Uh, yeah. Now, do you think that's sort of the the dynamic that's going on in your story between the couple? Um, no, I've taken actually a couple in their late forties uh, and put them together. Um, so, essentially, it starts off from their twenties and then moves on till they reach their late forties. Um, so it's a period of time where the relationship has gone through so much of strife that, you know that it's, uh, it was probably not meant to be. Now what happens? Should we ask you or should we leave people in suspense? I think people should, should read the story. Uh, That's a good idea. They, sh they can pick up Indian Voices and Jasmine has mentioned where it's available. She's mentioned the publisher and so on and so and forth. And the sponsor. And Scotiabank has sponsored it, yes. And thank you Scotiabank. <laughs> Pankaj, if you're watching this, thank you for also advertising on our site. <laughs> Do you okay. think if marriage, well, because marriage doesn't happen as often as it used to, well, how do you feel? So you, if you don't have that outline of staying married to one person and having kids with them, so you could be not married, but you could have maybe two or three long-term relationships throughout your life. You, you could date someone like 25 to 40 and then maybe date someone 40 to 50, whatever. So if Can you, you have any overlap? there natalie yeah you can do that uh, but if you have like see the adults i don't think it matters if you do that but do you think that there's people who would bother you so say your first husband or your first wife would they get upset if you just your first boyfriend or your first girlfriend would they get upset if you wanted to be with someone else yeah probably but what about the kids what happens if you have kids with more than one person do you think that their step parents will treat them not as fair or not like their own do does that make sense or not really because i don't think yeah that you need to have marriage i'm fine with just you know living with someone or having i don't know a companion but if there's kids involved then what happens to them they just have that just become like a norm that'll just become like like get used to it because people always say oh i don't want to get divorced because uh you know we have a family we have a house but remove that attachment and then like just keep living right or what how do you see it i think if the relationship is not working you need to to look look mm -hmm. into it uh like look try to make it work first and try to make it work first yes mm -hmm. that that's imperative and then um if it's not working then you need to uh, find out why it's not working and work even further oh god i don't think uh and then and then decide what's best um I don't know if you thought about this, Jude, but because you mentioned, you know, people really what's going on is people are becoming increasingly looking out for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Looking inward or... Yes, that's true. Or, yeah. uh, I mean, you could even call it being selfish, right? Mm -hmm. More concerned about their own personal mm -hmm. whatever than mm -hmm. family or community needs. Yes. What do you think the implications are for communities? Like, do you think it's a, in the long run, it'll be a better thing? Or, or, or do you think there, there could be some problems as a real result to this change? There could be problems in the change because if, um, I'm, I'm looking inwardly at my own marriage, for instance, it's a lot of give and take. Um, sometimes compromises also, but essentially it's looking out for the other person's interest at all times. And that's the way you do it out of love because love is unconditional. For most of the part, it is in unconditional. You don't do things because 
you want something for yourself, but you're doing it for your companion, you're doing it for the woman in your life. Mm-hmm. And I think um, that's the reason why our marriage, even though it's had its own rough patches, mm-hmm. uh, has, has, um, has survived. Where, whereas a lot of marriages in the, I- among South Asians, and I see that all the time because we have friends, um, it's, it's, go- it's going through some rough, rough times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're always looking at what they can get out of the relationship and not what you can give into the relationship. It's an, in, in, it's an investment. And Scotia Bank, again, it's an investment. Uh, so it's an investment. You have to invest in, in your customers, in your relationships, in your... Yeah. In your yeah. Okay, great. Um, what about... Now, this is going to sound silly, but uh, what do you call that? Um, what describe it when uh Come when on. when you have more than one wife oh. or more than one polygamy husband. yeah polygamy no yeah. that's what no. what i'm just asking a question natalie well ancient india had that yeah the kings had that they had uh, the the muslims the hindus i'm i'm sure all all the kings had their share of women so yeah that that existed but that was mainly because they wanted to have more and more children and if, it, just like Henry VIII wanted a male child to carry on the legacy, uh, the same rule of thumb happened in India. You so don't think there was any other motivation? Uh, it could have been other motivations, but we, we, are not, we don't want to talk about, uh, it's, it's not one of the sex shows, right? So no, no, yeah. it's, uh, I wasn't even thinking yeah. of that. Okay, whatever <laughs> you're thinking about. Okay. Um, <laughs> you said variations, so variety. Or well, <laughs> or just uh, that's what I got. Oh, so what do you think? Just <laughs> so you think it's, uh, do you think that the new age marriage is not going to be a marriage? You can just date whoever you want, and then just at the same time. I, I, I really don't. No, because it seems that's where it's heading. Natalie. It does seem that's where it's heading. I was going to ask you. Would yeah. you? How would you feel about having more than one husband? Yeah, I'll be fine with that, but I wouldn't want my husband to have more than one wife. But that's what well, I mean. That's a hypocrisy. Uh, well, yeah, well, that's what I mean. So, But if that's something that, like, okay, but because, you know, if, for example, when I was younger, that's what I saw. You know, you saw two parents, like, mostly together or whatever. But if kids coming now, if they're taught from a young age that you could just, you know, be with more than one person, then they're not going to be jealous. They're not going to think that it's not right because... For them, it'll just be the way it is, so they'll be used to it. And then by the time they're ready to date and have a family of their own, it won't matter who's dating who because that's what they have become accustomed to. So maybe you just need to re-educate well, yourself. That's, well, that's what I mean. But if that's where it's headed, then I, I will have to obviously re-educate myself. But well, I nobody just knows where yeah. we're headed. <laughs> but uh, because the wedding industry is big now, so I don't know if the wedding industry would bigger. allow that to happen. It's it's sm- you know. That's the opportunity for the wedding industry when there's only one wedding per couple. Now that they're going to have God knows how many weddings yeah. per person, uh, it's a <laughs> growth industry. Now, uh, <laughs> Jude, can you read uh, maybe something from your story just to give us a flavor of, of the book, sure. of the I story, which is in Indian Voices? That's actually true. Just have one wedding with whoever you're with at the time you want to get married and then after that anything goes what do you mean anything goes whatever like what whatever happens happens no matter what it is what no more weddings yeah still weddings but you're not gonna have a wedding every time you get with someone could be like once a year <laughs> let's go with it you one one paragraph or well um whatever you want to you know read. just a, a page yeah, uh, two paragraphs. A couple of a uh, couple of maybe a paragraph or two. Okay. Just to give a we want to get a, a bit of a flavor of the story. Sure. Just set it up maybe for people. Yeah. Um, the hiccups in their marriage, like most problems, began to surface in small, periodic doses. Saviola wanted a child. In fact, she craved for children. Whenever she saw children in the street, she wished they were her own. She even began to volunteer as a child mind in the nearby school. But despite hundreds of attempts in back-breaking, love-making postures with her husband, Saviola and Joachim remained barren. Then there was his problem of gingivitis, and though she had read somewhere that Clark Gable had the same problem, he at least had dimples. Joachim had bad breath, and he farted and belched almost incessantly, she thought. 
She also began to notice that her husband never trimmed his nostril hair. The fact that his nostrils were wide and cavernous did not ease matters for the beholder. And then there was the eating disorder. Joachim slobbered while he ate, and thick flecks of drool would appear on the white, starched tablecloth. Worse still, he had a premature prostate gland problem. Most men got it in their, in their 50s. He got it sooner than them, necessitating adult diapers. At times he'd forget to wear them, and the urine would trickle drop by drop until the stench of uric acid filled the air around them. Is that sufficient? That's good. <laughs> okay. You know, I think you overlooked the convenience factor, though, okay. of the adult diapers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was great, uh, Jude. Now, um, now you're going to be participating in the uh, in the opening on April seventh as well. Uh, Is that yes, right? I, I will. Yeah. Now, will you be reading that night as well? Uh, no, uh, Jasmine has a few people that uh, that she has. A, there are 88 authors, remember, and 88. 20 yeah. 20 of them are probably from Canada. Yeah. So, so there are a lot more. Um, who can read on that particular day? Yeah. Well, then we're we're really glad we uh, had the opportunity to, to hear you read yeah, thank you. a little bit from yeah. the story today. So thanks for doing that. Um, and uh, is there is there anything else you want to leave us with today? Um, any final thoughts, or maybe we haven't asked you about? And of course, we want to. I just want to mention briefly about the your your business mm -hmm. too. And, and if people, uh, do you want to just uh, sure. speak briefly? About I had uh, Suleka dot com. Sulika? It's called Suleka. So S U L E K H A, Suleka dot com, which is the largest portal for the South Asian community in Canada. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, yes, it is. And yeah. so, so um, a, a portal. I, I can imagine there's all sorts of uh, things. Yes. That happen on there. Yeah, we what? have a lot of verticals. So Suleka actually means uh, the writer in Sanskrit. Uh, it started off as a blog site and then came, became much bigger, much much huger than anticipated. So mm -hmm. in 1998 when it was started, it was a blog site. So Indians throughout the world would communicate with each other. For instance, a housewife in, let's say, Texas, she, she wanted to make chapatis, so she would put it on a blog. Mm -hmm. And then someone from India would say, okay, you use this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. And that would make good chapatis uh, or a guy from uh, a businessman would also write something in his blog and so it was connecting Indians worldwide yeah. and it became bigger and bigger and bigger now it's a vertical of different things that Indians really love so movies, cricket um, the blog of course and then uh, the travel section uh, so it's, it's huge yeah and Indian news of course you get that uh, every day it's online news so can you get a good recipe for Sor Patel? You can actually get, um, you know what, I'll post it on my blog and then put it out there. Why okay, not? well, there's a picture of it. We've yeah. got a picture yeah. of Sor Patel oh, right good. there. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, um, that looks good. it's yeah. looking real good. And uh, the show's almost over, so yeah. we'll be get a chance to maybe uh, <laughs> go get some of that yeah. somewhere in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, okay, so Salika.com, S-U-L-E-K-H-A dot com that's and people right. all over the world can check that out and uh, yeah. find out all kinds of stuff so that's yes. that's great yeah. well listen thanks for coming in today thank you very much telling us about this yeah. and um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again on April 7th at yeah. the supermarket sure thank okay. you okay. okay thanks yeah. thanks Jude okay we're going to take just a little quick break and then come back wrap up the show right after this here on liquid launch that channel dot com all right baby I feel time pass.